Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Morale Booster with John Ugulu. And today I have with me somebody who is big on fitness, and his name is John D. McBride. Uh, John is the owner of um, Next Level Sports Performance and Fitness. So welcome on my show, John. Thank you for having me today. Awesome. My pleasure. Okay, so John, uh, my viewers, you know, health is a big thing these days. A lot of people struggle with going to the gym, keeping up with their yearly resolutions. And uh, I would want you to talk about how you got into the industry and how you have impacted lives so far. Can you please tell us? Certainly. Um, how I got into the industry when I was not even a teenager yet, um, I really became fascinated with the whole idea of strength and conditioning, strength training, and lifting weights. And I followed at that time, uh, you know, keep in mind, I've been doing this a really long time. Right. So, uh, like how long? Uh, this is my 40th year of training Ooh. clients. <laughs> so I've been doing this a really long time, but I got started, you know, almost 50 years ago when I was just, you know, uh, in essence, a kid, I started weight training and I just became a vacuum or sponge for information about training. Right. <laughs> and, and that gravitated into a strength and conditioning career. Um, and kind of put that in perspective, when I started as a strength and conditioning coach, when I was in college, the first ever strength coach in America was hired when I was still in college. Oh, so the profession of strength and conditioning was brand new uh, in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, but my interest and passion for strength training really is what opened the doors for pursuing this as a career. Okay. So in that time, you know, I, I had started, for example, as a fitness director at a YMCA uh, back yep. in Connecticut. And we actually started a women's weight training program in the early 80s. And if you think about how many uh, taboos there was to women's strength tra training in 82, 83, um, we were way ahead of the curve then. And my passion then led me to a position at the University of Tennessee where I was an assistant strength coach. And that led to a position as an assistant strength coach at Arizona State University. And then I became the head strength coach, director of athletic performance out here in California at the University of the Pacific in Stockton, California. Wow. And in that time, I also began training uh, my own personal clients, both for strength and conditioning, athletic performance, but also in the fitness realm. And... In my career, I've had an opportunity to really impact a large number of individuals um, to help them achieve their absolute top potential as athletes and now achieving levels of health and fitness that many times they didn't think was possible. But in any, any case, it really starts with that first step, when they begin. Right. And it doesn't matter if it's a 12-year-old athlete or a 45-year-old who needs to lose 50 or 60 or more pounds because they never participated in a fitness lifestyle. Right. Wow. You've, you know, you, you've come a long way. So right now, you know in and out of what you're talking about. You know in and out of what, you know, staying healthy really means. Yeah. You know, but uh, recently I have realized that uh, people prefer to take like drugs, you know, take medications, take, you know, some energy drinks. You know, what's your advice regarding that? Is it, can, is it, uh, is it better to have that as a substitute or to do the physical training, the physical, the strength training? Um. People, First people of all, go surgery to just to lose weight. Exactly, and and with that, oftentimes, when when you're talking about the surgery, sometimes it just they don't know they don't have the discipline. They just and they don't they don't have the discipline. But that surgery 
often opens the door to, I need to make lifestyle changes. Right. I don't recommend it. Uh, I've had several clients over the years that have had, you know, surgery to lose weight. Um, but the key is really the first step, taking that first commitment. Um, Discipline. Consistency. Right. Um, if, if I begin a fitness program today and I'm sore and I don't come back for two weeks, I'm not going to get results. Right. And, and so with non-athlete clients, I really try and take them slower than they want to go because I want to keep them in the game. Right. Um, I don't want them to get started. And, and, and I'll be real honest. There was a, one of my first fitness jobs was at a club back in Connecticut. Um, I won't say the name of it, but we were instructed when we got a new client to try and get them to sign up for a lifetime membership, lifetime membership in this club. And keep in mind, this was in the early eighties. Right. And then the first time we trained them, we were to work them out as hard as we could with the hope that they'd never come back again. <laughs> and, and that so disgusted me that I didn't even stay two weeks on that job. It just appalled me that the idea was not to get someone committed Right. to changing their life. They just wanted that check coming in, the business did, and didn't really care about the individuals. Right. Where, my, where my viewpoint today is, if someone gets started and we take a step every single day, um, be consistent, and when you're struggling, those are the days that you want to, you know, use maybe somebody like myself or uh, motivational videos to right. just get you through that struggle. And I do think if somebody's never been in a fitness lifestyle, a healthy lifestyle, yeah. it helps to have a personal coach. Right. Um, oftentimes it just needs that accountability to keep taking those steps. Um, and that, that's really the key is being able to take a step every day. And oftentimes we, we hear things or see things on the internet that are extremes, which maybe to get extreme results, you need to take extremes, extreme but measures. no one, no one starts there. Right. <laughs> uh, the greatest bodybuilders in the world did not start training with the extremes. Right. They that's, began that's pushing a point themselves. Made now. <laughs> right. They began pushing themselves, challenging themselves, and to keep getting results, they had to take bigger steps and bigger steps. But for the vast majority of people, it's cutting back on calories, cutting back on sugar, uh, getting more sleep, beginning a 15 or 20 minute exercise program not two or three hours, just get started. Right. That's, that's, that's a good one you just said. Just get started. You know, in another challenge, I realize so many people have been experiencing is when they get started, they get started all by themselves. You know, you need a, you need a form of accountability, a high level of accountability. So like, you know, this is also a mentoring uh, platform and a coaching platform. So what do you think about anybody who wants to get started having a partner, you know, who would hold that person accountable at all times? Um, I think, um, you know, the, the research is really clear that if you train in a group, yeah. it makes it much more motivational. Right. Um, you're more committed because you know, you're not the only one. The, the challenge is finding people with similar goals and desires as you, you wouldn't want to jump into a group of, you know, elite power lifters. Right. If you're just starting out. Yeah. But in some of our group training, we can, we train in a format the way uh, our group training goes. It's a format. Right. We can plug 
anyone into that format, but scale it to exercise levels that they can handle. And within the same group, we can have, you know, former college athletes along with the retired individual, but even though it's a group training session, it's scaled to the individual, but there's the motivation of everyone being together and the enthusiasm and people helping people and um, just that, that camaraderie and encouragement that comes from other people. In a lot of cases, just even having a trainer to hold you accountable until the lifestyle of health and fitness becomes a habit. I tell my initial clients, it is not my goal to have them as a client for the rest of their lives. It is my goal to have it become a habit and a lifestyle that they don't necessarily need me standing over them. But I also know that for some people, they will forever need that accountability. They need the discipline of a coach challenge. I've had athletes that they do a great job when they're being coached, Mm -hmm. but when they're on their own, they would have never succeeded without having a coach. Right. And, and the same is with that fitness lifestyle. True. That's, that's a good way of encouraging people. You know, what you've said makes a whole lot of sense. You know, I have so many people who are actually struggling with uh, weight issues and they keep telling me they want to go the route of surgery. You know, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to like sabotage or put a stop on other people's business. But I keep telling them, try to lose some weight. Try to hit the gym first. You know, work with a coach for a while before taking such a, before making such a decision. Right. And I believe, yeah, my viewers who are actually watching this program, who this message resonates with, they would now understand the importance of, you know, trying what you can do without surgery. Exactly. Right. So I have a son who has uh, indicated he has started to like basketball and uh, he'll be glad to watch this program as well I, you know so what's your advice for a 10 years old boy who just indicated interest in basketball regarding uh, fitness or strength training um initially initially um i'm a big fan of commitment to body weight training first Okay. Um, if, if you can get an individual, a young athlete to commit to three days a week, just even for a month of body weight training, okay. that allows them one to learn about their bodies. Right. Two, it helps them get the discipline and commitment to begin a more structured, um, uh, advanced, if you will, program. Um, and I think we often jump to advanced training methods before we ever really find out how our bodies function and work. Okay. Um, but ultimately then as a young athlete, um, simple jumps, uh, short sprints, and then very foundational, fundamental strength training. Um, it, it's not a type of strength training where, you know, some of my peers, when we talk and, and message on uh, through social media and the like, uh, we see things on social media that we think, man, I got to do this exercise. And the individuals that are demonstrating are just trying to create hype and excitement. Right. And the fundamentals aren't fun necessarily. Um, There's not a lot of hype and excitement to fundamentals, but when we master the fundamentals, then that's when you lay the foundation for greatness. Awesome. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. I like that. 
you know, that's a, that's a way to really motivate people who are watching this program now. So do you have any programs you have developed that could help people get started? Uh, I do, um, uh, I, I do online training for people. Uh, and <clears throat> that, uh, it all depends on what their needs are, how we develop that program. Um, I, I have to admit my, my personal taste is I prefer in-person training, okay. but I also know that um, there's a lot of information out there that is not necessarily sound that people are following. It's amazing when you go into a gym today and people are just, scanning through Instagram during their workout to find what exercise they're going to do next. <laughs> and it really takes programming for long-term success. And it can't be, I'm going to do this today. And then, Oh, I'm going to do this today. And then, Oh, I'm going to do this today. Mm -hmm. It has to be that let's have a program of training to lay down a foundation and then build a solid, um, career, if you will, or uh, performance result is built on the foundation that you laid from the programming. Oh, okay. That's a good one. A good advice for the people watching the program right now. <laughs> so the, the challenge with online, you know, even just sending out a program to somebody is if they've had some experience training, but they're not solid in the found fundamentals, right. their mindset is, oh, this isn't very good. Mm -hmm. And let me see how you do for six to 12 weeks. Then we build upon that. And let me see how you do on the next six to 12 weeks and see how you build upon that. And it's that long-term commitment. One, one of my best athletes I've had, she was a three-time Olympian. I trained her all through high, her high school career, okay. she went off to college, and then when she graduated from college, she came back and I trained her through her, her pretty much entire Olympic professional career. Right. But the whole thing started with laying the foundation of the fundamentals. Right. But if a lot of times that high school athlete will go online and they'll see what big time university is doing and they want to copy what big time university is doing, but that individual has never laid down that solid foundation to build upon. What, what's commonly termed today, long-term athletic development. All right. So, so in your career, you have had the opportunity to work with uh, athletes, um, both young and old, or is yeah. it just a category, you know, a set of, you know? Um, my, my career started, you know, in strength and condition. Well, started in fitness, but I was gearing towards trying to work with athletes. That was my whole focus. Okay. So just, you know, kind of put it in perspective. Um, I, I'm actually the only strength coach in the history of the United States to take a non-scholarship walk-on to the number one pick in a draft in any sport. Whoa. Um, I've had uh, an athlete who was not even ranked in the top 50 in the United States in swimming that within about a year of training uh, with me, got two gold medals in the Olympic games. So one of the things Whoa. I pride myself <laughs> is, if you have ability and talent, one of my, my strong points is, fully developing that potential. But at the same time, I've been able to develop or take my years and years of experience and develop the same thing with the person who just wants to get in shape. And the same principles, different methods, different techniques, but the same principles are uh, followed for somebody who wants to lose 100 pounds as they are for an athlete coming in who wants to be great, you have to lay down the solid foundation, right. start with, you know, and a, and a great athlete, you can advance faster. 
Yeah. There's no question. You see right away that somebody's got talent and ability. They have tremendous um, uh, work capacity that you can advance them quickly. But somebody who's never worked out, you follow the same principles, but maybe you can't advance as quick. Um, you're taking baby steps as opposed to giant steps. Right. And that's the key to having a coach is the coach is who's determining at what rate you can challenge yourself and at what rate you can advance and constant feedback. Um, you know, I have one client right now that, yes, um, he had bypass surgery to lose weight. Um, and now he's ready to begin the exercise portion of that. And I've had him for a little over a month. Um, the first month, we took it really slow, really slow. And then, you know, just this week, we really began ramping it up quite a bit for this individual who is still very, very heavy but I'm learning what he can handle and learning what is too stressful or not stressful enough to help him achieve his goals. He wants to lose another 150 to 200 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a challenge a lot of people go through. Now, they find it difficult to bring out some money to hire a coach. Then when things get bad, they'll rather spend times 10 to get on that hospital bed. You know? right. So I keep telling people, health should be part of your budget, your monthly budget. Just the same way you prepare for your gas bills, your mortgage, the money you pay to your health coach should be included in your monthly bill. It is better you do it yourself and stay healthy than to wait for it to become a prescription by the doctor. Right. You know. Yeah, so what's your take on that? Well, um, health is something that we take for granted until we don't have it. Exactly. <laughs> and at some point in time, if you have an unhealthy lifestyle, you're going to pay for that. Definitely. <laughs> um, wh whether you're paying for surgery, whether you're paying, you know, for your prescriptions, you're going to pay for that. So it's better to plan into it right from the beginning. Right. Um, and, and as I stated earlier, if I can get you to create a health healthy lifestyle, um, fitness lifestyle, where you can do it without my accountability and you can continue doing it then you reverse that process where you pay early and then you're not paying later because it's become you know learning how to eat properly uh, making sure you get the sleep it becomes a lifestyle budgeting time not just money budgeting time for a healthy lifestyle right that's true you know i I, I do go to the gym. I try to do, you know, like two times a week. You know, at times I go three times a week because I'm always very busy. But still, when I first got started, I, 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 my coach was a very wonderful person, or rather, he's a very wonderful person. The first thing he said was, look, there is one thing I want you to know. Even without you lifting weights, if you just keep, doing your hands like this without carrying anything consistently for months, you would notice a difference. So don't do anything that would stress you out because if you do that, you would never return to this gym. <laughs> so, exactly. so he said, take it one step at a time. Do not get intimidated by the big guys all around. Those guys have been doing it for decades. <laughs> so just take it at your own pace and he started with me at a very light pace it always got to a point where i was the one always requesting to go some extra you know so if every coach can tell people that same thing you know i think it would encourage people more unlike you going to the gym having a coach who would wear you out on the first day 
So what's your take on that? <laughs> so, you know, one of the common, and part of this is from, you know, the internet. The belief is that if I'm not drenched in sweat, nearly puking <laughs> done, it wasn't a good workout. Right. And, and I have an athlete who, this, this was his first week quote to me. He said, Coach, where I was before, if I wasn't on my knees, just sweating, drip off, sweat dripping off of me, the trainer was upset and he'd want me to do more. He said, but I didn't get any results. He said, I've gotten more results in this first week than I did in the last six months. Right. And he said, and the workout seems so easy. I'm not exhausted when I'm done. And, and he was a big offensive lineman. You know, he's a big kid. And he made tremendous results in a very short period of time and never felt like he was just dragged through the mud to get through his workout. Right. And people, people never realize that lately we have breathable shirts, breathable clothes, clothes that would make it three times harder for you to sweat really bad, unlike when you wear the regular sporting clothes. So right. when people wear breathable clothes without knowing, and they're not sweating the way they ought to have been sweating, they feel they're not working out, but they're just working extra hard. So I keep telling people, at times I might wear a breathable shirt that would reduce the way I sweat or the way the sweat you know, actually shows. It doesn't mean I haven't worked out. <laughs> you are just wearing the regular shirt that shows that sweat, but I'm wearing the breathable one. So you cannot judge by the quantity or the amount of sweat that is showing on someone's uh, clothes. So what you just said is a good, it's a good point there. So you don't necessarily have to sweat like profusely before you would know you're doing something. <laughs> right. And, yeah. and it's not, you know, a lot of people that the, the other feedback that they think it was or wasn't a good workout is how sore they are the next day. Well, I wasn't very sore. Well, <laughs> one of the things that I impress upon my athletes is, and, and I'm sure you've probably read this quote, the whole purpose is to stimulate, not annihilate. Yeah. And, and that's how we look at it. We want to stimulate you know, muscle growth. We want to stimulate fat loss. But we don't need to um, just destroy you today. I saw recently a, a comedian who was very heavy, very overweight, who's begun a fitness program. He's lost 100 pounds in his fitness program. So his whole comedy routine is about his weight loss. Oh. And he said, yeah, my trainer said that we're going to do this to burn some fat. And he said, I just hope it's a slow burn and not all at once combustible. <laughs> and, and people want that all at once combustible where we really need the slow, consistent burn over time. Right. Right. That's true. Well, we have, my viewers have actually learned a lot from you, myself, including, I have learned so much. And uh, I really do appreciate the fact that you could take time out to educate us and uh, mentor those of us well, I, who are listening. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah. So you say you run the business with your wife? Yes. That's it. Accountability is key. <laughs> <laughs> so having a partner who you can be accountable to is always key. So I use this platform as a, uh, uh, a way of mentoring and coaching people. I know so many of my viewers would have resonated with what you have said. And um, is there a telephone number that people can call you on? Do you have a telephone number you want to give out for people to reach out to you? Yes. And, and, uh, texting or make sure they leave a message because I'm one of those that if I don't recognize the number, I tend not to answer my phone. Right. So to, to text or make sure you leave a message. But it's uh, area code 209 403 Awesome. Thank you very much. And uh, your information is all, you know, it's displaying at the bottom of the screen. So a lot of them would be able to reach out to you. So are you on, uh, what social media platforms are you on? Uh, I'm on Instagram and my uh, name on Instagram is Coach McB, C-O-A-C-H-M-C-B-1. 
Uh, my Twitter is Coach McBee, and uh, uh, LinkedIn is Coach McBee. Awesome. All right. Thank you for joining us on the program, Coach. And uh, I look forward to having you on so many.